European Foundation for South Asian Studies. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak at this side event about asylum and terrorism. It is a pressing matter of this time and therefore important to talk about. I would like to comment on the alleged nexus between migration and terrorism and the approach of the West. I would also like to conclude with recommendations for tackling this issue. I am sure everyone here is more than aware of the refugee crisis that has been taking place over the last three years throughout the Middle East, South Asia, and the West. Even before, the concept of displaced people has not been something new. As thousands of migrants fled their homes in Syria, Iraq, Eritrea, and more recently Myanmar, the borders of Europe have found themselves adapting, expanding, and overflowed in attempts to accommodate those in need of being resettled. The main reason for such a large migration of people is because of terrorism. Terrorism is deplorable in all of its forms, and its effects on local populations is devastating. The effects of terrorism are not just contained to where it is occurring and has an impact globally, as one can see from the challenges Europe is now facing in trying to cope with the amounts of new arrivals within its borders. One of the biggest fears within Europe in correlation with the refugee crisis was that of radicalization of the refugees and, in turn, terrorism. Through 2015 through 2017, the West experienced several terrorist attacks in California, Paris, London, Germany, and Brussels. This heightened alerts and confirmed among some their original fears. It was revealed that some of the terrorists involved had traveled migration routes undetected to enter Europe in order to fulfill their designs. This brought to light some of the shortcomings of the Schengen area and porous territories in which the criminals were able to take advantage of. The conclusion of the nexus between migration and terrorism has consistently grown, gaining political momentum and defining some of the debates on migration and terrorism in Europe and other parts of the West like the US. The consensus of this nexus is twofold. One, that refugees are vulnerable to radicalization, and two, the refugee flow is backdoor for terrorists. Although some of the atrocities carried out were by terrorists who came through migrant routes through Greece and Italy, they were not refugees themselves. In the period of January 2016 through April 2017, four asylum seekers were involved in terrorist attacks, but no actual refugees. A large majority of terrorist attacks committed in the West are by those already living there. The perpetrators are legal residents and citizens of the West. As of now, there is still no conclusive evidence that migration leads to increased terrorist activity. It has been confirmed by those here in the United Nations that the impression that terrorists take advantage of the refugee flow to carry out attacks or are more prone to radicalization is analytically and statistically unfounded. Those who become radicalized in the West are usually second, third, or even fourth generation, which can lead us to believe that these are homegrown terrorists. <coughs> it is our actions and migration policies within the West which lead to restriction to access to safe territory and covert movements of people that may ultimately assist terrorists and lead to increased terrorist activity. The more hostile Western nations treat those seeking refuge within its borders, the more likely this message transcends negatively to those causing the terror globally, providing momentum. This is not assisting the West's role in combating terrorism. How we treat those seeking refuge within Western borders will determine the output of violence in the future. States must recognize that the vast majority of people fleeing from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Myanmar, Eritrea, and elsewhere are victims of terrorism and should not be stigmatized as terrorists themselves. The mistakes but lessons learned that have occurred in dealing with refugees in the 21st century can now be applied to the Rohingya crisis in Bangladesh. The refugee camp in Cox's Bazar, Bangladesh, is now the largest camp in the world as it has grown over the last year from those escaping persecution in Myanmar. The refugee population in Cox's Bazar is approximately 60% youth, or those up to the age of 24. Although not highly likely, if radicalization was to occur, this is the most likely target population age to fall victim. It is also said that those who have committed terrorism as part of the ARSA in Myanmar now live amongst the refugee population as migrants themselves. This is the largest cause for terrorism amongst, amongst refugees if it was going to occur. This problem must be dealt with by filtering out those who were or are ARSA fighters and separate from those who truly are in need and wanting of help with no association. 
Separating those who are the terrorists from those who are the asylum seekers is key. However, they are most likely fleeing terrorism themselves. As we establish how to do this in Bangladesh, we can then adapt it to the borders within Europe that refugees are crossing. The main goal is to help those who are actually refugees. These people do need to be kept separate, though. We need to think twice on how we allocate our budgets and where we decide to continue or stop funding our, our attention. The main challenge in the detection of flagged suspects stems from little to poor data in EU information databases, as well as operational and technological capacities on the frontline staff in border states to put information to use in real time. Schengen border policies and management are of crucial in order to address the challenges faced from the intersection of migrants and terrorists. Distinguishing those who have acquired refugee status from asylum seekers and migrants can make a big difference in terms of assessing the threats that can be linked to the supposed nexus between refugees and terrorists. The primary threat does not appear to be one in which an increased refugee is an uptick in terrorism. The threat appears to come from a combination of returning foreign fighters who are EU citizens or residents, and the EU and other Western countries seem to lack the capacity to detect them. Working harder to detect these terrorists should not lead to a tightening of borders, as this may lead to an increase in organized crime transnationally and lead foreign fighters to more illegal entry routes, which would be even harder to control. Let it be known that terrorism is abhorrent. Those genuine refugees who are fleeing their homelands are doing so out of fear for terrorism and want for a better life for themselves and their children. It is often not by choice or desire that men and women leave the places they call home. When men and women seek asylum, it is out of necessity. Therefore, it is abhorrent that terrorists with their intentions abuse and exploit the struggle of refugees, who in essence are fleeing the terror of these terrorists. When a terrorist does slip through the cracks of border control and disguises oneself as a refugee, it should be condemned. However, it is important not to stigmatize all refugees because of a few. It is important to issue the aid to those who need it. By continuing to assist refugees, we can hear the stories and struggles against terrorism in order to help prevent terrorism. By closing borders and passing restricting policies, we will force those who are victims of terrorism to remain where they are in danger, providing terrorists, those to which maintain power over, and achieve the goal of creating separatism between the East and the West. Thank you.